My family's been fishing for eight generations. I've been fishing the Gulf for 40 years. It's just a way of life. When we first got the news of the oil spill, we thought it was the end of the world. BP said they would try to make it right. They rented my boat, hired us to help with the cleanup, made up my losses, paid me what I would have made fishing. They worked with all kinds of people here in Mississippi. They haven't always been perfect, but they're trying. Now that we're back on the water, things are getting a whole lot better. I'm Pete Floyd, and I'm a fisherman in Pascagoula, Mississippi. BP asked me to tell you my story to keep you informed and to invite you down to the Gulf Coast. We're open for business, and it's time to start buying Gulf seafood again. My name is Ryan Jusclare. I'm from Laurels, Louisiana. I own and operate Ryan's Trucking. We do all fuel hauling. And since a big P.O.L. spill happened, our business has declined drastically. Uh, the all fuel hauling that we used to do, deep water drilling, is no longer there. And we're down to seven, eight runs a week, down to one or two runs a week, and no runs some weeks. It really hurt us, and BP said they'd help us, but they're telling me there's no money in, in it for all fuel truckers. I have all the documents right here, 147 pages. That they had me sent to them. Then they told me I was it was due to moratorium that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't working. So in August I went back and filed again on the moratorium. September, uh, November 9th, they called me and told me that I was approved. Should receive a check within three to four days. November 10th, I got a letter in the mail saying I was declined, that there was no funds allocated for off-field trucking. I was not, not directly affiliated with the BP oil spill. They told me I could go haul freight over the road. We can't do it with one truck. I can't compete with the Schneiders, the Swift, the Riders. They have thousands of trucks, I have one. I depend on all field. And if they're not drilling, I'm not working. The minute uh, the, all field, the all spill happened and they put a halt on all drilling, well, our work stopped. And uh, we were doing anywhere from six to $8,000 a week gross all field hauling. And within three weeks, I was down to twelve, fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars a week gross. Some weeks, none at all. And that's because the drilling. Once the drilling stopped, our work stopped. You know, I was hauling all deep water stuff, stretch trailer loads, uh, low boy loads. In fact, by the time June came around, I had to sell my low boy because it just wasn't any work for it anymore, and I. The note was just too much to pay for not having any work. Uh, how long did this go on? How did it it's play still out? Going, it's still going it's on. It's still going on. It's still going on. I received my check last week as all field trucker. I received my check net $256. $256? You right. can't even put diesel in your truck for that. No, that's right. And uh, about uh, three weeks ago, I owed them $189 you know, to pay my insurance because I had no runs at all that week. That's oh how God. slow it is. It's uh, So far this week I have two runs, you know, thank God we made two runs this week, so I might get a check next week. When did you first put in a claim? Yeah, Could you describe uh, that process? When did you first put in your well, application? Well, the first claim I put in was in June, and it turned me down saying it was moratorium to come back in August. August 23rd, they opened up the moratorium uh -huh. funding, and I went over there and I was second in line. I uh, turn in, uh, they want 2008, 2009 tax returns, and also my check stubs for 2010. Well, then they'd say, well, bring it 2007 also. So we brought them, came out to 147 pages of documentation. Everything looked good. They figured out I had everything right. And this went on from August 23rd. They said I should be hearing something within 21 days. Well, 21 days passed. Still no word. I called them up. They said that my claim was on the review. All my papers are right. They were just reviewing it. Every seven days I called them up till I got tired. I started calling for supervisors. Uh -huh. And they said they'd escalate the process and move me to the top of the list, which they did four or five different times, which with no effect. Finally, I got a call on November 9th last year saying that my claim was approved. Uh -huh. I even went online. I seen where it was up, approved waiting on payment, yeah, I could receive payment within four to five business days, 
And the next morning I got up, I checked my mail, and there was a letter in the mail from them saying my claim was denied. And their, their uh, answer was, there's no money allocated for trucking industry that we could haul freight over the road. Uh -huh. We're not set up to haul freight. We're flatbed, yeah. stretch, and drop deck. Mostly I was on heavy haul and stretch uh -huh. loads. You know, that, that was right. my specialty, and I did this for the past 10 years. That's what I've been doing, that stuff right there. Uh -huh. And it just stopped. Once they quit doing deep water drilling, the, the long tools stopped, the heavy tools stopped. Uh -huh. No more use for them. And to this day, I mean, like I say, it's still very slow. And they tell me there's other money allocated for truckers. Well, I, I filed for that one, and they sent me a package in the mail, which I find just a slap in the face. It's a grant. And then come to find out it's uh, really a loan uh -huh. in, the, in the means of a grant. Uh -huh. You know, it's good for, it, you have five years to pay it back. Five years to pay it back. But you can't use it for personal use to help my business or anything like that. It's got to be done for education, which I'm Almost 50. like retraining they're talking about. Yeah, I'm about 56 like. years old. I ain't going back to school. No, I hear I, you. I mean, this is what I do, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, really, it's a slap in the face to us because you, you take, if you lost under $60,000 or $70,000 last year because of the spill, they could offer you three to $30,000. That's not helping yeah, me at all. And, it's an and insult. What would you say in terms of your experience with BP about trying to get a hold of them and get an, expl an adequate explanation? It, uh, it'll put you in high blood pressure medicine. Uh -huh. it, you know, because you, you're tired of, you get a voice, you know, and they'll put you on hold and leave you on hold. I'd stay on hold once for two hours and 45 minutes. Two hours and 45 minutes? Until finally I got aggravated and hung up. They want you to hang up, and they tell you they're there, 20, you know, 24 hours a day. You call any time. Uh, I mean, very frustrated, you know, because you go in there for help, which they're supposed to be doing for you, and really they they let you fill out the paperwork, and it falls between the cracks. They're not helping you. That's just a way to get you away, and you know, try to satisfy you till you see you're not getting what they promise you, and mm -hmm. you call them back, and they're not talking to you. Fine, when you get an answer, it's not a straight answer. It's just uh, what they think you want to hear, they'll tell you. Uh -huh. You know, it's not what you should hear. So is this grant the last uh, offer, which yeah, is really a loan? That's, that's the last one for us. Are, are you yeah. contemplating any kind of legal action? I wasn't, but till I got this. You know, once I got this, and I see that they're just trying to blow me off, you know, just to uh -huh. satisfy people and, you know, quit hearing from us. We are we are in the process of being, you know, going to meet with lawyers and all. You I, know see. I mean, you have to do what you have to do. I mean, I lost too much money. This is my livelihood, and that truck can't stay parked. That truck's got to roll. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and you you indicated before this happened, you had three trucks, but you had some debt on them, and you had to actually sell them in order to get a hole again. You could even not have employees now, whereas before you could have two other truckers working for you. Right. I'm I'm a, I'm a so on operator right now. So your truck. business sounds That's like it, it was you know, devastated. It was. The sad part about it, this community depends on oil field. And we were just getting back on our feet since Hurricane Katrina, where people were making a good living, you was turning a good profit, and this happened and it's like it just shot us in the foot again, you know. We're just down again and no work and they can have all the commercials they want on TV, on the radio. What they say and what they do is totally different, you know, because they're just trying to make everybody believe everything's all hunky-dory, you know, but it's not. I had one guy I was dealing with down here. He was, he was helping me all he could, you know, and uh, BP, he was on the BP claims. But when he, he did all his work and sent me on through the process, then it's like when you leave the one-on-one -on -one down here, and start dealing with people somewhere else, they don't want to hear from you. They, they just, it's, it's, I get up in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, go on my BP site, on the BP site, to see if I was approved yet or not. Uh -huh. I'd be traveling down the road and I'd be dialing their number to call and see what's going on. And I have to call five or six times before I could actually speak to a person. Uh -huh. You know, and they give me the same run around, well, you're up for review. You're in the review right now, you know. Well, I don't want to hear them in review. I want, I want it to move. When I heard people getting money and this and that, not truckers, but other people that wouldn't file because the moratorium 
were collecting money within a week, two weeks. And you know, it's like, I'm still hanging on, hanging on, and then uh, it's, it's, it gets you real angry, I tell you. I try not to show it, you know, but uh, it bothers me, you know, not knowing what tomorrow's gonna bring, you know. You know, they say you gotta stay strong, but uh, if I if I sleep four, not four hours a night, that's a lot. When they asked me what they owed me, I, I let them figure it out. I said, I'm not gonna tell you you owe me, you know, X amount of dollars when really you owe me this. So mm -hmm. I let them go through the whole deal, fill it out, and you know, I wasn't trying to jip them or anything like that, you know, I wanted to be fair with them and, you know, it's not like it was actually a lot, just to help us get by, you know, and it's just uh, one slap in the face after the other. You know, you always wake up and say, well, uh, if I get a run today, well, if you get a run today and uh, you have one breakdown, you're not talking about bringing a regular car to the shop. One tire you're looking at right around $600. If you get into the engine, you could be into the thousands. And you always got that in the back of your mind, you know you're not working. But if you do catch that run and you have one breakdown, you set back already, how much further back is going to put you in the hole, you know? Yeah, I understand. Because you've been digging and you're saving stuff to carry on later. You're digging in it, and if you get a breakdown, you got to dig in again because you're not getting any paycheck, you know? I and do. If, if we'd be running before the oil spill, I mean, I was, I was happy-go-lucky, you know, I was, I was bringing in some money, good money, you know. Right. If I wanted to take the weekend off, I didn't worry about it, I took the weekend off, uh -huh. you know. But I had my money made, I had my bills paid, and picked up a little bit, you know. But now, it's not picking up, it's steady digging out. It's digging, you know? digging up. Let me ask you this now. Uh, do you think it's a situation where, because they own all the money in the world, and they're dealing with small operators, you know, like one or two trucks for a trucker or a small that they're taking advantage of this? They, they're trying to get you where, you know, it's so much involved in trying to apply for it. Then when you just say, oh, I'm not messing with this, you know? And then they want further, more documentation. So finally, after, like I said, I even had to bring in my lease agreement with the company I run through, you know, to make sure to show them that I do run for this company and do all for your hauling. And uh, it's like, finally, after, I said, after four, 147 pages, I guess they figured, well, the more I'm asked for, the more he's gonna bring. So they said, let's go ahead and run it through. They helped some people out. A lot of people, a lot more word help than what they helped. And I believe the ones they helped, they just helped them to show a look we took. This group here, we went in this group, and we helped so many people so they can advertise, and we helped these. Then they took the set occupation, we helped these. They said, we helped these, they helped a few out of each occupation uh -huh. Just to keep the media over their backs is what it seems like. Yeah, and because as far as uh, helping everybody they should help, it's it's uh, it'll be a long time before that happens if it does happen. If it does happen, if yeah. it does, you know, they figure you know they're gonna aggravate you enough for getting more people, they just gonna drop it. And right. it's, uh, it's not worth it, you know. Stonewalling, it, I think it, they yeah. Call it. It's uh, they, that's what they're hoping you do. Is just say, uh, look, I'm not messing with all this, you know. And uh, they, they can they can throw it at me all they want. I'll bring them all the paperwork they want. You know? Okay. And and you mentioned that you're actually now considering uh, that you may have to hire an attorney and seek justice because uh, the many that they chose not to help. Uh, I think the only chance is to hire a lawyer. That's it. You know, we hate to do it, but if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. You know, I mean, uh, I don't know if not one trucker and. Look, we talk a lot. We travel, you know, from Fushon, uh, Houston, Alabama, and we talk, and you hear a lot on CB, but I never heard of one trucker yet that got any money. And uh, see, trucking, that's one thing where, I mean, we do all the hauling. We don't have lobbyists, lobbyists in Washington fighting for us, you know? Right. Like the, other, the other people money. do. Yeah, the, yeah. the shrimpers have lobbyists. Uh, the hotel association have lobbyists. Restaurant association have lobbyists. Trucking, we have nobody. No, you especially know, we're you our independent own. operators. Right, we're on our own, you know. And uh, I hate to give a third of what they owe me to a lawyer, but oh. that's what it takes to get it. That's what it takes, you know. That's what we're going to do. Would you consider them to be a square dealer? 
Not really. They they putting out what they want to the public, what they think the public ought to hear, and not what the public should hear. They should hear that they're not helping everybody say they're going to help. They help certain individuals in certain occupations just so they can say, well, yeah, we helped this occupation, helped this one, helped this one. But uh, they're not stepping up to the plate. They're just, they're doing, to, if you ask me, they're doing maybe 90%, uh, 10% of what they should do, and the other 90% is falling through the cracks. Uh, every time you turn around, they want more and more documentation. They're hoping that you get so aggravated, you'll just say, oh, I'm, not, I'm not messing with this anymore, you know, uh -huh. and just drop, drop the whole deal, you know. But uh, I turned in 147 pages of documentation, still got denied. I was accepted, up for payment, and the next day denied. Next so, day I mean, it's like, it sounds like they're talking you know, out of both sides of their mouth. Right, right. Anything else you want to add on this? No, that's that's about it. Uh, I mean, just want to let the public know it. I mean, if if you're not, if they're not doing what they should do, you need to speak up. Don't believe what you see on TV and what you hear on TV. Talk to the people behind the scene and find out what really is going on, you know.